Hi, and welcome to part 2 of your 6th iOS programming tutorial, where we will continue on from the web browser application that we began creating in our last tutorial. In our last tutorial, we created a basic web browser in which we could, at, as soon as the view loaded, load up Google, and then we could actually interact with the web page and zoom in and out. In this tutorial, we're going to make it more like a real web browser by adding in a URL or address bar at the top of our page so the user can enter the URL they wish to visit rather than just having a set URL. So let's go back to our main storyboard.storyboard .storyboard. and if you didn't follow along with the last tutorial, part one of this tutorial, then you'll need to do that to catch up. I'm going to make my web view slightly smaller so that we can fit a toolbar above it. Then in our objects panel, scroll down right near the bottom between a square looking button and a search bar with an orange circle on the bottom right of it, there's a bar that has the word edit in it. We need to drag that into the top of our screen. You may need to again resize the web browser so it clips right onto the bottom of the toolbar. Then in the toolbar we need to add a URL, address search bar. Keep that item and we'll just rename it to uh, visit or search, whatever you want. Let's just call it go. Then we need to add in a search bar so that the user can enter the URL. That's just going to be a text field, so scroll right up to the top, and in between the segment control and slider, drag in the text field. Put it before the go button and make sure that blue line appears, the one that goes from the top of the toolbar to the bottom. We can make it a bit bigger so it takes up pretty much the whole toolbar, and so the go is right at the edge. Then let's actually click on the text field so that the text field selected and if you're struggling to do that just in your hierarchy objects panel click on toolbar the arrow next to that then bar button item and then text field we'll set some placeholder text so let's just say enter url here and click enter then we need to set up the text field as an outlet and the go button as an action so go into your assistant editor and let's do that I'll just make my Xcode window slightly bigger so that you can see the whole screen. So begin by clicking on your text field and again make sure it's the actual text field that you have selected. And then right click and drag or control click and drag in between the two curly brackets right above the outlet for the web view. Let's just call this text field and connect that up. Then we need an action so once they've entered the URL they wish to go to they can press go. So let's do that next. Then we need to make that an action and make sure you've dragged it underneath the curly bracket. And we'll call that action uh, visit web page. And connect that up too. So let's go back into our viewcontroller.m and inside our visit web page action we need to put the code to get the text of the text field and set that to be the URL of the web browser. We'll keep this code in our view to load, and that'll pretty much act as our home page. So when the application loads, it automatically goes to google.com, and then from there, the user can visit their own web page. Copy this code, but keep it there, and then paste it inside the visit web page method. Then, we need to change only one line, the nstring URL string. So delete all the code after the equal sign, the at talking mark, talking mark area, and all we need to do is we need to go text field dot text. And it's that easy. All we're doing is we're setting the value of the string to be the text in the text field, and then converting that to a URL, then converting that to a URL request, and then loading the request into the web view. Let's run the application, and it should all work perfectly. So the build succeeded with no errors, which is hopefully what you have. You'll notice that as we wanted, it loads into Google at first. Then we can enter our own URL. So let's do that. Just enter a URL, whatever you want, and then press go when you're done. Wait a moment, and hopefully the web page will load. And as you can see, it does. There's still a few issues, such as the fact that the keyboard stays there even after we press go. So we do need to make sure that we hide the keyboard after we press go. Let's do that next. All we need to do is tell the keyboard to resign the first responder. Don't worry about that. what that means, just follow along. So let me zoom in and under the line inside our visit web page action, the web view load request line, do a square bracket and then type the name of our text field, which is text field, resign first responder. Close the square brackets and add a semicolon. And that'll just mean that as soon as we press the go button, 
the text field will close. So let's try again. Enter the web page again, and then when you enter the web page, press go. The keyboard should hopefully, when we press go, slide down immediately, and then the web page will load. So wait a moment, as you can see, the keyboard went away, which is what we wanted, and now the web page is loaded. Again, we can still interact with the web page, and as you can see, our web browser is starting to come along. In part 3 of this tutorial, we'll add another bar to the bottom of the screen with a back button and a forward button, because obviously you don't want to have to keep typing in URLs. And then in part 4, we'll make the addition of a search bar to the top of our uh, toolbar at the top of our screen. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, and if you have, be sure to like and subscribe, and visit our website, 99centsappdevelopment.com. If you've got any questions, comment on the video, or visit our Facebook page or website, or message us directly through YouTube. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.